Hi, I'm Beverly. I'm Jonathan. And, and we're, we're from, from the, the Singapore, Singapore Botanic, Botanic Gardens. Gardens. I take care of the plants at the National Orchid Garden. I start my day at 7am by making my rounds through the garden, making sure everything is in top condition to welcome visitors at 8.30am. So what do you look out for, John? I look out for things like yellow leaves, wilted flowers, and gaps in the landscape. I like working with plants directly, and not many jobs let you do that. So, plants are your colleagues lah. What about me? Uh, how about I show you some of my favourite plants, and you can decide from there. Okay, let's go. So where are we now, John? This is the Sam Kok Cool House. It's my favourite part of the National Orchid Garden because I help to design and plant the landscape inside. Temperature inside is kept to 16 to 23 degrees, to mimic a high altitude montane forest. Shall we take a look? Okay, let's go. I'm ready for the aircon. <laughs> so, what are your favourite plants here, John? Definitely the collection of carnivorous plants in this cool house. We have more than 30 different types of carnivorous plants inside this cool house. Why are they called carnivorous plants? Is it because they eat men? Actually, some of the largest carnivorous plants like Nepenthes rock candii have pitchers that grow big enough to trap small rats, lizards and frogs. Carnivorous plants have interesting types of traps to trap insect for nutrients. Pitcher plants like Nepenthes, Heliumphora and Cereceneas have traps to drown and digest their prey. Sundews, on the other hand, act like flypaper and trap insects with sticky tentacle-like structures on the surface of their leaves. These tentacles contain digestive enzymes, allowing the sundew to slowly digest its prey. In contrast, plants like the Venus flytrap use mechanical traps. The movement of the insect causes the leaves to close, trapping it inside. So, is it difficult to keep carnivorous plants? Do I have to feed them insects every day? Actually, no. You can even keep carnivorous plants in your own home. Let me show you how. Today, we'll be showing you how to make a carnivorous plant terrarium. First, we can start by soaking some sphagnum moss in water. It will take about 10 minutes for the moss to soak up the water. In the meantime, we can clean up the tank and start arranging the driftwood. I like to use sphagnum moss and pumice in a 1 is 1 ratio because it's well draining, retains sufficient moisture and you can easily see the water level in the tank. So now we shall proceed to mix the sphagnum moss and pumice. So once mixed, we can start filling the tank from the bottom. Okay, you can start passing me the plants, then we'll keep the extra media here in case we need to top up more media. So maybe you can start with the Nepenthes. Okay, you can easily remove the plant by holding the plant, then squeezing the bottom of the pot and the whole root ball should come out easily. So if the plant is root bound, you can remove some of the excess media to make it easier to plant. Then you add the plants one by one to the tank. Why do we have to change the media? Usually after a long while, the media starts to decompose and becomes very soft and rotten. So changing it to fresh media once in a while helps new roots to grow better. When you unpot the plants, you can trim off any dead leaves that you find so that your terrarium has a neater look. I'm arranging the plants to make sure they have sufficient space to grow with the taller plants behind and the shorter plants in front. We are more or 
or less done so we can finish up with the moss. What's the moss for? The moss helps form a layer on the surface to prevent weeds from growing. So I'm just covering all the exposed surfaces so that weeds will be less likely to grow on the surface. Once you're done, you can clean the tank. So since these are all carnivorous plants and then they eat insects, <laughs> does it mean I still need to give them like fertilizer and water for nutrients? Actually, carnivorous plants are quite simple to take care of. Okay, you need to put enough water to keep the moss moist but not, in, not too much that it builds up in the bottom of the tank. Could you pass me a spray bottle? Okay. Thank you. So, given that most of these plants were what we saw in the cool house just now, does this mean that I need to keep the terrarium in an air-conditioned room in my house as well? Uh, not at all. These plants can actually be kept in a well-ventilated area with enough sunlight, such as somewhere near the window. So once we've done with drying the tank, we have our completed terrarium. I hope you've learned a little bit more about carnivorous plants today. I sure did. And thank you for learning alongside us. See you next time. Bye! Bye.